Hey there again, folks. Welcome back to my let's play of Ever 17, The Out of Infinity. We are uh, now playing as a kid again. We are the cat's out of the bag. Uh, Sarah's our sister. Let's find out where this leads us. Um, hopefully to much better endings than before. Well, actually, the kid's endings ain't been that bad, but a more full and complete ending, I should say. Let's uh, find out more about Info... Info... Infovision. Infravision? Yes, yeah, it's Infravision. It's Infovision. Infrared vision. Usually the visible range for humans is limited to light with a wavelength of between 380... Let me just say it. Let me just say it, folks. Just wanted... One fact check, so one fact check. Okay, usually the visible range for humans is limited to light with a wavelength of, of between 380 New Mexico to 780 New Mexico. You see, I fact check on the pro. Some people said it was nanometers, but I say it's New Mexico's. Light with a wavelength longer than 780 New Mexico's is called infrared. Okay, I'll quit, I'll quit. Normal humans can't see light in this range. If you are able to see infrared, you would be able to sense the temperature of an object without actually touching it. And with this ability, you could also see in the pitch in, the, in pitch dark even without any light. Infrared rays are emitted from all what? infrared rays are emitted from all objects that have a temperature. Stronger light is emitted from warmer objects, and weaker light from objects with a, a lower temperature. I think I remember that from a Bill Nye episode. By sensing those things, you can tell the location and shape of an object in the darkness. Surprisingly, Sarah and I were told that we had the abilities, ability called infravision. Since we had this ability, naturally, it was difficult for us to imagine not being able to sense the temperature or to imagine complete darkness. I didn't realize something then. That was why I had noticed heat emanating from the generating room door. And that was why I had mistaken the light from the inverter unit as moonlight. That's why Sarah and I were able to see the 3D image independent, which nobody else could see. Why did we have this ability? I had no idea. Sora explained to us that it was a special ability passed on genetically. Genetics. This also meant it was highly possible that Sarah and I had the same parents. That's when it became almost certain that Sarah and I were brother and sister, but still, something seemed to be, seemed to be missing. We took a DNA test with a repaired LMRI. The results showed that Sarah and I were blood relatives with a 99.9999% certainty. That seems rather certain, but not fully certain. That had proven everything. It sounds like them, like them stupid uh, commercials. This would kill 99.999% of all germs. While the competitor, we kill 99.9999999% of all the germs. They're still saying they're not doing the complete job. And to be honest, I think, you know, humans have an immune system for a reason. Those extra 0.000001% of germs aren't going to kill us. Probably. And when that happened, memories of my childhood started to flood back. They rocked me like an explosion. All of the memories that had been that had been downed up flooded out at once, their bombard bombardment rendering me unconscious again. When I regained consciousness, Sarah was next to me. Sarah, my one and only sister. And you know she's your one and only sister. Mm -hmm. We were fraternal twins. I recall the bittersweet memories of of the days we had spent again. Oh, his memory's back. Okay, okay, never mind. Yeah. Onicha. Yes, Sarah. We hadn't slept at all since the day before. We had spent a long half day talking about all sorts of things. The memories of our childhood, then our time at the hospital, as well, of course. How I hadn't kept my promise, couldn't keep my promise. I had sworn to her that I would come to get her. 
Saying I took a long time going over and understanding all of the details. There was too much to talk about. A half day was hardly enough to restore the missing time, but... Sarah and I didn't need many words anymore. Brother, yes, Sarah. With just these words, we could understand each other. Sarah, Sarah put her head on my shoulder and closed her eyes gently. I sang her favorite lullaby. So the last one I got this cluck like a chicken, and this one they expect me to sing. Great turn for this let's play. Okay. Moon sprite shouldering a longbow. That's not how it goes at all. Waiting inside a dream. Tonight, a story by moonlight. Hoping the wait will be short. Sleeping curled and snug. Now I'm actually kind of remembering how the song, how the music actually. Sleeping in a mother's arms. End song. Good. Good. That. Be nice and clap for it too. Definitely saying that there's something between them. Uh, are they triplets? Their voices were coming from the kiosk. I went in. Hey! You know, PP hadn't been in this story very much. With Coco. That's really been confusing me now that I think about it because I mean they were inseparable um, before now. He didn't mention Pee Pee at all. You know when they uh, when they were playing chicken and uh, there's another scene I can't. What, what, what was it? Uh, Pee Pee was with the kid. That's right. Pee Pee was playing with a kid. <clears throat> oh, I was just thought I'd see what you look like playing chicks. Yep, that was the reason I'd gone searching for them and eventually found, wound up at the souvenir shop. <laughs> what? No way! seemed so against the game to begin with was embarrassed once she was complimented. What on earth was going on? Had she actually enjoyed the game? Speaking from the standpoint of someone who had experienced it, 
game, chicks did seem to possess a kind of ritualistic, demonic charm that could subdue the human ability to be rational. It seemed to be, it seemed to me that you might have been possessed by that charm. Oh well, that wasn't important. What was important was somehow I had missed out on seeing a historical moment. Use wacky performance. It's truly unfortunate. Darn it. I merely clicked my tongue. So, what are you doing now? Coco and you were sitting face to face on the carpet. Ibi had, it, had set his face on Coco's head. Between the two of them was a mountain of small, bead-like grains. A pin was stuck at the top of the mountain. A game of avalanche with a mountain of sand? No, I, when the, it was Coco that mentioned the Mountain of Tears or mentioned Tears, yeah. A Mountain of Tears. I sat next to them and pinched a single grain from the mountain. Oh, I remember. Coco was throwing these into the puddle at the ruins yesterday. Clear colorless grain. They were formed in the shape of a drop of water. Glass tears. They weren't made of glass. You could tell by touching them. You never told me what they were yesterday, did you? So I guess I'll try again. What are they? Remy tears. Coco closed her eyes and nodded. I don't care what you say. There's no way these are real mermaid tears. Saying this, you pointed to the display racks of the souvenir shop. I stood up and walked toward where you had pointed. The racks were packed with different kinds of merchandise. Among all of the stuff, there were there was a corner with a line of old-looking ceramic bottles. I picked one up and picked up one of the bottles and looked at it. It's slightly bigger than the size of my palm and heavier than I had imagined. It felt solid in my hand. Print on the label was Mermaid Tears. I looked at the bottom of the bottle. There was a round stamp on it. Contents, candy. Ingredients, sugar, corn syrup, acidifier, flavoring. I shook the bottle. I heard a dry, crisp sound. Pulling out the cork top, I poured out some out on my palm. I poured it, I poured it too much and some of them spilled from my hand to the floor. The mermaid tears bounced on the carpet as if they were dancing. I see. Unless they're mer that they're uh, merchandising sadness so much. Yay! Let's let's poke a mermaid and uh, uh, profit off of her tears. This is tears of laughter. I think I've seen something, uh, a thing or two, uh, like an anime, I think it's an anime or something, where it was, where it was Mermaid Tears was, I guess it's a, kind of a, sort of a, it's supposed to give you immortality or something. And I was thinking, why do they have to be mean to them? Why can't they just, uh, oh yeah, there was something like that on, uh, Yu Yu Hakusho was something like that. I don't think she's a mermaid, though. Was she? No. But, uh... Why not? Why not hire a comedian that's so funny that will make people... That will make the mermaid cry. That... That's a completely different way of going about it. Actually, let's open up a comedy club underwater. That's what you do. And you collect the napkins afterwards. You know, you provide a lot of napkins at the table of the, of the comedy club and then you collect the, you collect the garbage at the end of it and you have the mermaid tears that's how you do it that was a, that was too deep that was too well thought out I, that's very weird holding the bottle in my right hand and, and the teardrops in my left I went back to where I had been sitting before and plopped myself down with a thud so these mermaid tears are just some kind of souvenir huh? let's see mumbling to myself I popped popped all the teardrops from my left hand into my mouth. I chopped down on them. The melting, the melting sweetness spread in my mouth. These are good. It had been a long time since I tasted anything 
besides chicken besides a chicken sandwich. I'd heard somewhere before that eating sweets made people feel happy. That makes people feel depressed. I mean, if they felt happy, they would keep eating them. Oh, wait, they do. Okay. And at that moment, I was enraptured by the sweetness in my mouth. a way to measure how pretty a million flowers are because unless you have an accurate way to measure that you can't say for sure. I'm just saying.
数日後事件が起こりましたコンタ君が家を留守にしてる間に娘っ子がこっそりと戸棚を開けてとっくりの中身を飲んじゃったのですとっても美味しかったので娘っ子はその液体をくびっくびっと全部飲み干してしまいましたするとその時を境にして娘っ子は一切年を取らなくなってしまいました1年たち2年たち3年たち5年たち10年たち20年たっても娘っ子は美しい姿のままだったのです決して老いることのない肉体を娘っ子は手に入れてしまったのでしたいつの時代も不老長寿は人類の夢であり希望ですがこの娘っ子の場合は違いましたです娘っ子は我が身の不幸を嘆き呪いましたなぜなら大好きだった彼氏さんはどんどん年を取っていくのに自分は17歳のまま少しも成長しなかったからですしばらくしてさらに悲しい出来事が娘っ子を襲いました彼氏さんが34歳という若さでこの世を去ってしまったのですくなる間際彼氏さんは娘っ子にこう言いました700年待ってくれ700年後再びこの世に生まれ変わり必ず君のところへ行くから娘っ子は泣きましたおいおいおいおいと泣き続けましたやがて彼氏さんを失った悲しみから娘っ子はビクニとなり諸国アンギャの旅へと出かけることにしましたビクニというのは出家した2層女性のお坊さんのことです<音声>ビクニは国々を巡って病気の人を治し貧しい人を助け田畑を耕し川に橋を架け行く先々で椿の種をまきました椿がすくすくと成長し花を咲かせる頃になるとまた別の国へと移って行き困ってそんなことを何百年も続けました椿の種をまいたのは彼氏さんの道しるべにするためです彼氏さんがこの世に生まれ変わってきた時自分の居場所がわかるようにビクニは種をまいたのでしたビクニは諦めていませんでした彼氏さんの言葉をずっとずっと信じ続けていたのですそしてついに700年が経ちビクニは生まれ故郷に戻りましたけれどもふるさとの村にビクニの知っている人は一人もいません仕方なくビクニは村外れの洞窟へ入ることにしましたその入り口近くに椿の種をたくさんたくさんまきました洞窟に入る前ビクニは村人にこんなことを言いました日の出と日没の頃に私は鈴を鳴らしますこの鈴の音が聞こえなくなったら私は亡くなったと思ってくださいそれから1年たち2年たち3年たち5年たち10年たち20年たっても彼氏さんはやってきませんでした30年たち40年たち50年たち60年たち70年たち80年たってもやっぱり彼氏さんはやってきませんでしたビクニが生まれてから800年の年月が流れました鈴の音が聞こえなくなりましたとうとう最後まで彼氏さんが姿を現すことはありませんでした
洞窟の前の椿は美しく咲き誇りその後何年もの間散ることはなかったと言います Nobody ever showed up to this village, showed up from the village, you know,、uh, to be like, hey, you still okay? For a hundred years? いつまでも若く美しかった美国のことを尊び祈りを捧げ健康で明るく長生きできるように願いを込めて彼女のことを「八尾美国」と呼ぶようになったとさ。おしまいじゃなかった続くあんえっもううんうんここの知ってるお話はこれで終わりなんだけどねひょっとしたらまだ続きがあるかもしれないしどういうこと結局ヤオビクニさんの遺体は誰も確認してないんだよ鈴の音が聞こえなくなったから死んじゃったんじゃないかって思っただけでもしかしたら日本のどこかの洞窟でまだヤオビクニさんは生き続けているのかもしれないでしょいまだに彼氏さんのことを待ってるとそうかなここはほんのちょびっとだけだけど生きてるような気がするんだけどなうん私もそう思う、oh, on, ねえここ八尾美国っていつ生まれたの詳しくは知らないんだけど今から1300年ぐらい前だって聞いたことがある OK well take that back she wasn't on her a p p e t i t in the 15th はい。She would have been living since the Nera era or even before that. That would amaze even Prince Nakano Oi. Okay. I agree, I guess. <laughs> I don't know who that is. What is that? I don't know who that is. 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 I don't know. ジョージの夢をむやみに壊すんじゃないのねえここうん<笑>ヤオビクニが700歳で洞窟に入ったってことはそれから600年間もひたすら彼氏さんを待ち続けてたってことになるのねあ今でも生きてるかもしれないから待ち続けてる現在進行形かとにかくどれですか I mean, they're not mentioning that as far as the story goes. Boyfriend might have actually came there and was like, hey, what's up? Thanks for waiting 800 years. Totally didn't think you would, but it'd be awkward if I did show up and, you know. So, hey, we'll croak again in about 30, year, 30 to 70 years, whatever the life expectancy was in the 1500s. And, uh, you can wait another 800 years. カレイスさんが椿の花を追い求めてようやく洞窟の淵へとたどり着いたその時運命の再会が訪れるわけよ600年間の孤独が報われるわけよ1300年
100年間の恋が実るわけよふぅ、はあ、なんてロマンチックなんでしょうロマンチックかここはロマンチックっていうよりもちょっぴり悲しい気がするな That's about it. One more comment though. She, she kept the... I was just wondering, it's kind of weird that... I mean, it's Coco, so who knows if she has all the facts, right? But she kept saying boyfriend. Did they never, did they never actually marry or anything, you know? They're all like... Uh, you know... Bleh. I would thought they would have at least, uh... You know... Uh, tied the knot or something sometime in those 17 years. Which make it make more, a lot more sense than her waiting, you know. But anyway, how that actually comes into play with uh, Sugumi, I don't know. That seems like that's definitely relating to Sugumi. How she at this point don't know that she's. He doesn't know. That she's、uh, immortal. So. Yeah, I don't know how this is gonna play into that, but I'm guessing it will somehow. I was also thinking a little bit ago that, uh. There hasn't been any choices yet. Or there hasn't been any choices in a while. So I'm wondering what that's all about. Maybe it's too far along to where I can't mess up. I didn't say that. I'll mess up if I think that, but. Excuse me. Um. I don't know. Definitely curious. That's what I liked about this game, seriously. So, uh. I do hope you folks enjoy this, and, uh. Shall return for the next one, and we'll uncover more about how this whole thing's gonna go down. That's gonna end. In the next one. <laughs>